All right, and hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Oast Talk. Um, as always, I have my lovely co-host Charles here. How you doing, Charles? Hey, hello. And I also have with us our special guest, Raiku. How you doing, man? Hello there, not too bad. All right, that's great. So today we have a few questions here for Raiku, and for those that might not know who Raiku is, he's one of the top players in the standard game mode of our game for the United Kingdom. How does that feel? Uh, well, it took a long time, and uh, yeah, I guess it feels good, but there's a lot of amazing players in the uh, country that we're trying to get uh, up onto the top level too. All right, okay, so we'll kind of open this up just uh, basically a uh, little bit around the same of what I did with uh, some of the other top players. So when did you first start playing out? Uh, 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 when did you first start playing OS and how did you find out about it? Okay, well this is a good one because um, I actually started playing OS through my friend Navai, who actually happens to be my neighbor in real life and best friend since I was very young. Um, and we both used to play uh, a few games together and like we'd play player versus player, there'd be queue based games where you'd have to wait quite a while. So he stumbled across a rhythm game called OS and uh, he brought me along and it was a great way to waste time during queues and it ended up turning into uh, my life. Which isn't a bad thing. Okay, now when you say, um, when you say queues, what kind of games were those that required um, queues? See, I was trying to avoid that, but it was World of Warcraft back in the day. Um, <laughs> yep, I have to be honest. Well, that's pretty well, cool. Yeah, the queues in that game are like 30 to an hour, right? Um, mm -hmm. Well, it depends. I mean, we had a period where uh, it was the end, and this will be jargon to people who don't play, but uh, it was season 8, and we were competing for the for some higher ranks in uh, 5v5, and the queues tended to be quite long, and we used to face the only uh, other team competing. So the queues could be from 15 minutes to an hour, so this was the best way to pass the time. Yeah, it seems like uh, just playing OS in between queues is starting to spread into other games like uh, League of Legends, actually. A lot of people are playing OS while they're waiting for a ranked game to start if they're in a higher rank when it takes a while to start. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And the, fa the fantastic thing about that is uh, through sites like Twitch and that sort of thing, uh, a lot of very high-ranked League players who have viewers in the thousands are bringing some brilliant attention to OSU, which uh, in turn is bringing more people into the game. Yeah, that was quite the event, wasn't it? Where Dyrus just started in Box Box or started playing OS, and then suddenly everybody's showing up and <laughs> talking about League and OS chat. It's fantastic. Yep, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to the next question. Um, so uh, I assume you use a tablet right now? Oh, Charles. Um, no, I have never used a tablet. And in fact, I'll tell awesome. you the, um, the story of this. Um, I actually, uh, about two years ago, when I first started playing uh, this game, my friend Navai uses a tablet, he's an extremely skilled and consistent player, and uh, he inspired me to go out to uh, our local computer shop called PC World, and I picked up a tablet, brought it home, um, within five minutes I realised this isn't for me, and uh, within that five minutes I decided I'm just going to go back, take it back, it wasn't for me, and I stuck with mouse ever since. Best decision. So you saw a tablet being used the first time and then switched to mouse permanently when usually people see mouse used the first time and then switch to tablet permanently. That's an interesting twist. Yeah, indeed it is. I think uh, I just preferred the feel. Um, I was actually inspired mainly by Sylvia and I realized that why isn't there more mouse players? And I thought, wow, if we can uh, start some sort of thing where more people use mouse, then I think it'd be a good way to counteract the uh, massive influx of tablet players and prove that if you do play mouse, you can still be a great player. Is Doomsday your secret brother? <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday is uh, Doomsday is is by far uh, one of the greatest inspirations. I think everyone can agree with this. Mouse players, Doomsday is yeah. one of our uh, one of our gods. He's incredible. Actually, Doomsday is one of the reasons I'm still into mapping right now. Actually, <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. I'm liking this interview already. Yeah, this is doing good. <laughs> So far, right. so far, you're praising my favorite playstyle, and um, yeah, I definitely have no qualms with that. Because I mean, I own both tablet and mouse. I've played OS on just about everything you could possibly think of, and I always come back to mouse because mouse is mouse is just where it's at. Thing is, um, I'm reading the chat below, and I think uh, what I can 
agree on here is despite the fact and this we could get into the technicalities of using mouse but despite the fact that um, most of the top players are tablet I think it's entirely possible albeit maybe a little bit harder because you know with the tablet you're you have the option of hovering which means you have a lot more sort of dynamic movement whereas yeah, mouse has a lot more weight behind it doesn't don't some mice have uh, exact lift settings where you can lift it above the mouse pad and still have it work yeah and the important thing about that is uh, when you're actually going for big um, big uh, jumps and that sort of thing you are always going to have the uh, because you've got your your hand set up on the table depending on uh, depending on how you hold your mouse when you take sharp corners the mouse is always going to lift a little bit and if you can set the settings uh, to a certain degree you won't affect your tracking whatsoever if you get like a to a height of maybe one or two millimeters which is in fact happening most of the time when you're playing through a map interesting yes but um and tablets also have absolute positioning that means no matter where you are on the board if your pen goes to destination x destination x is always going to be the same place every time as to where with mouse that's not the same thing. Like, um, you could like the best way. I call that a feature, to be honest. <laughs> the best way to explain it. Well, yeah, it's definitely like a. It's definitely a feature of the tablet. Yeah, that's in. That's one of the strengths to it, and it's also really good for drawing and stuff like that, which is why it was kind of intended like that. But uh, basically, and there are some. Now I can't say that all mouses don't have absolute positioning because there are some mice out there. That have been designed to work on those large scale tablets, the very large ones. It's like a giant mouse pad, and then your mouse sits on top of it, and then your uh, tablet has, your mouse has absolute positioning due to the fact that it's on the tablet board. I always thought that looked ridiculous. It does look ridiculous, but if you can get decent with it, it becomes dangerous because now not only do you have the you have the caliber to move your mouse around like a mouse player, but now you also have the absolute absolute positioning of a tablet player, and that's a scary combo. I think that's that's quite interesting because uh, if someone in the near future were to invent some sort of tracking system, because right now in mice we have laser and optical, and uh, uh, I think if we could get to the point where we could evolve that into some sort of mechanism where at the bottom of the mouse we've got a uh, a tablet style tracking system with absolute. The, they exist, yeah. They do exist. Yeah. Yes. Some no one's told me. You've never well, heard they, of tablet mouse before. They just <laughs> no. look a little. They look a little ridiculous. They do look a little ridiculous, but there are tablet mice, and they are dangerous. I mean, this, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> what happens if somebody picks up that playing style? They end a completely separate category. Tablet mice. <laughs> well, I'm I having mean, an epiphany. It technically, it's just it's like a sexy fusion of the both play styles. Yeah. That's the one playstyle nobody can really complain about. You can't go, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> is there anyone that you know so far on the game that's actually using this? I, I play I don't know. Mouse. Sometimes. I mean, I, mean I, know, I know Fun Orange uses a mouse, but I don't know if he uses a tablet mouse. That'd but be very I, interesting. I, that would be. I'd have to check. I mean, anyway. one thing I found um, before we go on is uh, okay, with the uh, movements um, in the game, you can very much tell when someone's using a mouse or a tablet. And uh, in this particular instance, with someone like Fun Orange, is uh, he's got a very sort of um, Mickey-style movement, which is very straight line, very straight edge, and very fast. Which is why I think he's got the advantage with aim, because his cursor isn't moving about as much as someone else would from point to point. Which could be an advantage for the tablet mouse. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right. Well, well, with all the talking about playstyles and everything, uh, the next question would be basically, how often do you play? Oh, well, this is a good one. Um, right now, as it stands, uh, I'm on pretty much uh, at least three times a week. However, um, the past couple of months have been a period where I've had to focus on work. Um, so I've come back to, I guess, full, st uh, full scale play again, which, um, yeah, I'm just going to round up to around three or four times a week. That's like actual playing and ranking, wow. if we can, you know, count that. Mm. That's a lot of days. Yeah, it's a long time. I mean, I'll, I'll go further than that. I could say that um, the time that I'm spent not playing and that I'm actually modding and, uh, and mapping from time to time takes up some of that as well. And uh, obviously the AFKing in hashtag Osu. 
I'm yeah, I've been there. More than seven days a week. I've been there before. More than seven days a week. Are you like creating time <laughs> paradoxes oh, yeah. as you're playing the game? Oh, I see. I've got all the time. All right. All right. Uh, I do want to ask now, um, because we were talking about the mouse and all. What kind of a uh, mouse do you use for the game, and also the keyboard to accompany it? Okay. Well, um, I haven't actually um changed so much since the days where I was playing the MMORPGs. Um, I've always used the uh, Razer Death Adder. And because I've got so accustomed to the uh, the weight and the feel of the mouse, um, I guess my playstyle has just evolved using this mouse. And uh, many people I've spoken to in the past can agree that maybe it's not the most viable pick for a mouse in Osu, but I think it's perfect just because it's grown with me. And uh, as far as the, the uh, keyboard goes, I'm simply using a Razer, I think it's the uh, Black Widow Ultimate, which uses blue switches, and I just haven't changed. I've got so used to it. Mm. Good to and know we have the same really well. keyboard. Yeah. Mine has tons of anomalies though, so maybe you've been spared the frustration. Um, I guess so. I mean, I I haven't altered them at all. I've got um I've got blue switches under these, which come standard yeah. with it. Uh, and I guess it's just perfect. It's perfect I, for my style of play. Yeah, I guess alternator. so. Like, what happens is that mine will occasionally it will input lag, for like up to ten milliseconds or twenty, and then I have to like notice it before I get a failing grade on a map. <laughs> it's very interesting. Anyway, I um, that Go on. yeah, no, I, I I have remarkable hardware. Oh, if if you haven't, then by all means stick with it. <laughs> like, you're spared. Yeah, I mean, there we go. Uh, we, we could use that as a uh, razor promotion video. We could uh, <laughs> post this up. Both a, a razor promotion and a demotion. If you have weird hardware problems, stay away. If not, go for <laughs> it. Yeah. Like, I, if I recall. Um, Wolf also uses a Black Widow. Oh, he does? I think so. I guess I'm on the right track then. I yeah. use TT Esports by Thermalite. TT Esports? Yep. What? That's Esports in the title? Yes. Oh my goodness. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's it's a, something. It's a Blue Switch mechanical keyboard. It's nice. And then I've got uh, my Abyssus, Razer Abyssus Mirror. All these razor mice, man. The only razor mouse I got was the Avisus, and it was defective. It oh, didn't even you. Move, yeah. work right. It was terrible. And what I found uh, when sort of sifting through the various hardwares used for uh, input into the game is uh, all all jokes aside about the tablet. I mean, I I don't use tablet at all. Um, but I I do think when it comes to to the movement and uh, I guess if you can into this is going to be quite complicated. But if you can integrate. Uh, like streaming, if you're actually like stream speed and the uh, the weight that it takes to push down on your keys, uh, depending on whether you've got reds, clears, browns, or blues, or whatever the rest there are, I think uh, it can really impact your style of play. I mean, as an alternator, blues are perfect because there's just enough weight when you come off your first finger to know when to put down the second finger. Whereas if you had red switch, I don't think it would quite work. And especially, I'm I'm not the greatest of streamers. That's always been my vice. Um, I'm more of an Amy sort of player. Um, so when it comes to streaming, I think if I did have red switches, I think I'd have a better time. But I reckon it'd take some experience playing it to find out, and I'm really looking forward to trying it. I don't think I can. I think I'm counteracting what I said earlier about getting so used to the same hardware. I think it's a very good idea to switch up what you do and see what fits you best. So we might see some red switches from Riku in the future. Yeah, well hopefully All right. a computer, a good computer, I'll start streaming maybe one day. I think right. the uh, first reaction people will have to red switches is, Ah, why is it pressing the keys? I'm not even touching them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. exactly. Great, alright, so Zicha's gonna get off with the next question. Alright, so, um, now, with all the talk about hardware, everything that we've went over so far, are there any players, and you have mentioned a couple players already, but uh, are there any players that you seriously look up to, and are there some that you do wish to surpass or uh, over yeah. overdo? Yeah, I mean, these are goals that a lot of people set for themselves, especially when you've reached a higher rank. You know, you meet people who are within your skill range but have notably better traits than you do. Um, I mean, I'll start from the beginning. Um, I was uh, pretty bad when I started, like everyone else, and I ran across someone called Nick Skate, uh, who was a mouse user, and I was fascinated by his movement and the way how smooth he was moving from from point to point. I thought, wow, this is incredible! Can you teach me? 
And uh, Nick Skate uh, gave me the settings, much like if anyone asked me, I'd give it to them. Um, he pretty much mentored me from my first month of playing till maybe a year in. Um, and that's my first instance of someone that I've really looked up to. And uh, I still, to this day, don't think I've surpassed him, even though he'll always say I do. And, you know, I think he's just being humble. So that's one person I've got to call out. He's, uh, he's really done me justice and he's an incredible player. And uh, moving on to the obvious, uh, Sylvia, the Japanese mouse pro. Um, he's an alternator. He's got a very snappy movement, just like I do. I uh, use the same settings as his, and uh, he's someone that I've always constantly looked up to. Even to this day, he has scores that have uh, have almost. They, I guess, they surpass most tablet players these days, and that's uh, that's very that's a, that's a massive achievement for someone who uses mouse. So that's they exactly why I'm. Test What's the that? Time. They yeah, the test the, yeah. Time. I that's do why actually... I'm constantly looking up to him. I want to ask, um, you say you have the same settings, what DPI is that actually? Okay, well, Sylvia uses uh, 1000 DPI game. Oh, okay. um, He's got uh, 1.0 uh, sensitivity uh, via OSU and 6 over 11 in the Windows sensitivity, and that's uh, exactly what I'm using. Cool. And I think the advantage to that is uh, the lower the DPI, I know a lot of people use higher DPI. Um, I don't think, I think that detracts from the control and the very slightest movement is going to have an impact on if you make a jump or not. And even in streams, it, the same thing applies. So I, uh, again, Nixgate basically told me to work down the DPI and uh, eventually work to a, to a place where I feel like I've got the most control without um, impacting my range of motion. So I think I stopped at uh, 1000 DPI and it worked perfectly. And that's exactly what Sylvia had too, so I thought, well, if I'm on the right track, then I'll continue. Great, yeah, I'm starting to see people under 1500 DPI, so I'm going down to like, even 500 occasionally. I'm I mean... Using 400. But yeah. that, at the point, it starts to be a real pain on the arm. The mm -hmm. thing is, um, back in the day, uh, I was told that Shizuru actually used 400 DPI, which is uh, incredibly low, and I'm not sure how he uh, accommodated to his range of motion, because surely that would be really difficult to move. Um, well, right here I could kind of enlighten that a little bit because I play at 400 DPI. Um, you basically hold your arm out. It's fully like out. It's not like, like you're not resting it on your armrest. It's up in the air and you don't, well, at least I don't, I don't actually let my hand touch my mouse pad. It's always on the <laughs> mouse at all times. And you constantly move it, keeping your wrist off the play field. Like it never touches your desk. Your wrist is See? always gotta be up. It consistently uh, surprised me, uh, looking over various mouse players' streams, the uh, diversity of how people use their mouse. And uh, I've seen people like, uh, in fact, I think it was Pionta, who actually uses the claw grip. And he's a really incredible player, one of the most precise hidden hard rock players. So the next question, I'll go ahead and let Charles ask here. Uh, no, that's really awkward for me, but all right, sure, why not? Um, yeah, are there any? Oh, oh, that's that's really awkward. I know the answer to this one. All right. Um, what kind of uh, maps do you play, either for like you know practice or just ones that you enjoy? And um, are there any styles or parts in maps that you're not really fond of? Okay, this is uh, this is the side that I like and very enjoy talking about. Um, I think. Well, I'll, I'll give you a sort of very small list of the maps that I consistently play once I get on. And that um, starts with the story of my wife, uh, the Ruota difficulty, which is basically a bunch of squares and zigzags that uh, increase in, in uh, spacing as you move along the song. And it really sort of practices your, uh, your uh, range of movement and you can, get, you can warm up fantastic with it as uh, you can get very consistent from playing that constantly. And that's why I guess uh, I've got better at jumps. Um, so I think uh, as far as parts that I don't enjoy in maps so much, I mean, as much as I like to bash very good streamers, um, I think that uh, that I've got to get better at streaming and I think there's always parts of songs that include streams that I sort of get really rather frustrated with, but um, as far as maybe a singled out pattern, um, I don't like diamonds. I don't like diamonds at all. <laughs> I dislike them. Squares yeah. I love. 
I love squares because you don't like diamonds. I don't like diamonds. As in like long diamonds, like top sort of like the top two are farther away than the uh, the middle two. If you know what I mean. Wait, so squares are okay, but diamonds aren't? Um, well, it's uh, squares are fine, but it's the diamonds that have a sort of very sort of pointy upwards, and maybe the the notes at the side oh, aren't okay. so far away. Oh, I see. So it's see, like uneven angle changes. And now here's a tip for everyone who doesn't like squares, because I know that uh, that limit's in the thousands. Uh, Jesse, Jesus1412, told me that to get past a square, instead of looking at it as the whole thing, do it as two straight lines, and that's it. Just see it as two separate parts, and then you just see it as lines, and it's just going from one point to the other. I always just do circles on squares, and it works. <laughs> I Can't wish go I luck could. with that. But being a mouse player, you sort of have to snap. There's no getting away with it. Um, I'm a mouse player. Tablet I do circles mouse. on oh, yeah. square. I do circles on teach squares. Teach me, Zetro. Teach me. Dude, if I could teach <laughs> myself how to play better than that and use my circles on squares tactic, I wouldn't be dropping steadily from 2k to like 10. Yeah. <laughs> More like That's 300 to 10. Yeah. Um... Anyways, so our next question is, you we do notice that you've made quite a bit of mods, so do you enjoy modding, or is it just something you kind of do to pass time? Um, well, at the very start, uh, my first mod was on a broccoli map, and uh, he asked my help, so oh I boy. thought, hey, I reckon, you know, I can give him some tips or something. Um, so that was my uh, first ever mod, I just, it was a very sort of playability mod, because of course I didn't know any of the, um, the technicalities of uh, how to map. So it was very, it was purely from a player's point of view, which he actually found very insightful and helped him out massively. So from then I sort of developed that and started enjoying modding. And yeah, it's totally something I enjoy. It's, uh, it, you know, I, I enjoy it and I pass time with it because the main thing about modding is I think uh, helping out mappers to create something that the players can play is the best thing you can do. Because without mappers and modders, this game can go on, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like I always, I always like to tell people I just ask people to playtest my stuff, and sometimes I don't even ask them for a mod because all I'm interested in is how they're playing it and like oh, how indeed. that goes. I feel like modding from playtests is some of the most valuable information you could ever get because at think, the end of the day, that's where the maps are going, right? I think that's the most uh, important that you've touched on right there because uh, when it comes to modding, I think it should be mandatory to playtest before or get someone to do it because then you get a really feel, you get a real feel of how it's going to be end game because at the end of the day. Once you've finished uh, a map, you know, put all the aesthetics aside, it's about how it plays and how it flows, you know what I mean? Oh yeah! <laughs> people people get on me for doing gameplay stuff and not visuals. I mean, I like, think uh, gameplay is most important. I'll bubble something and it'll look weird, it's like, what are you doing, Chelsea? I'm like, no, 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 play it! <coughs> Hands up. <laughs> well, that's my a debatable mapper, one. My favorite by the way. That's a de oh my god, that's a debatable <laughs> one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, oh, I got, I got people. Those mappers later. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got people that simultaneously love me and hate me that day. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess back to what I was saying about um, the modding. Yeah, I think it's the most fantastic thing you can do because as a player, before getting into that, you don't have a clue what's going on, and you just play the maps without giving any sort of credit to the people who've worked tirelessly to get it done. And uh, now that I've come to that side of the game, it's really given me an insight onto how it works and to the work that people put in. And being a part of that's awesome. You should know. Actually, yeah, that actually just tie in right to our next question. Uh, you have a ranked map now, so that means you are one. <laughs> have you thought about oh, making man. anything else? Uh, absolutely. Um, that first map um, that I made was... Uh, I was very much inspired by LK LKS's maps. You know, he's one of my favorite mappers. And uh, without thinking, Really? Wow. Yeah, he's such a smooth mapper, and without uh, thinking, I just decided to use one of the songs because I absolutely loved it. So I decided to put my own twist on it and develop like a quick style of mapping that I've learned from modding, which is great. Through modding, you get to learn how to map, which is uh, a definite, yeah. Um, yeah, that that first map, um, spent a lot of time on it, had a lot of help from some great people like yourself, Charles Deacon, uh, Sapphire Ghost, and I Mittens. I don't think I actually looked at that map before. Ah, uh, you gave me some sound advice over the days. You counted. Oh, okay, that's what you're I thought you meant, like, specifically <laughs> on the set. No, it was all good. Um, so yeah, that first map, I guess uh, you could call me a mapper, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to produce a lot more. I'm going to find some time um, to actually put some maps forward, but 
I sort of want to get to the point where I've I've modded for such a long time that I've got a real insight onto all the various styles of maps and ha find a way to sort of integrate it into my own, if you know what I mean. Yes. It's all mm -hmm. good being able to map like the Catalina, but if you can't uh, do something individual, then what's the point? I wish there were more mappers like with Catalina. <laughs> so good. <laughs> In fact, right. he was my first noble mapper. I loved him or oh, her. It's a, it's a her. I learned how to mod, mod from mapping. I did it. <laughs> I did it. Ass yeah, backwards. well, you. There was. <laughs> you didn't have anything to look at back then. No, you I did. You were the maps. Yeah, you were like <laughs> you were every single very thing. little. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at what? I was looking at Lardo or something. Yeah. 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 Man, that's the one thing I regret not playing back then and getting involved in the uh, that whole style of uh, sorry that whole side of the game back then. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's harder to age if you were way back then. You know, like I mean, we had Cyclo and Z Track coming and going. This new stuff sucks. Hmm. Right. I, I I don't know if I agree with that too much, Charles. Hey, you're the one who talks shit about dragons. Well, in fact, I'll I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> I think um. Light Wubberfool. Yeah, there he goes. He's doing it. <laughs> Light right. Wubberfool. I like messing with Z-Trot. Anyway, yeah, Triple W, he's really fond of the old stuff, as uh, we mentioned in his, as he mentioned in his interview. But it doesn't stop him from playing the new stuff and doing that. That is true. Um, it's... Talking about the old maps, um, I think to an extent, like Wubberfool, he really enjoys playing these old maps and he's got some very high ranks. Pretty much rank 1 on every single 2008-2009 map. I actually really enjoy playing them because it's such a different style of mapping to today that it gives you a sort of a different taste of what was going on. So you've got to play differently and it gives you a lot more experience. So I think everyone should have a go at these older maps. Yeah, there really is a lot more like focus on hitting the circles at the right time back then because the placement could be anything. The placement could be anywhere, and you really don't know unless you're paying attention to the approach circles. Save so jumps all over the place. Oh jeez. And it's usually us to play hidden as well. Oh, the hidden hidden is extremely hard on 2008, 2009 maps. I think that's uh, people are always asking me, how did you get good at hidden? Why do you always play hidden? Well. Number one, uh, I haven't taken Hidden off ever since uh, I started playing this game. And number two, I enjoy those old maps and I constantly played Hidden on them. So it sort of taught you how to adapt to different ARs while still playing Hidden. So it just becomes a very Actually, sort of, yeah. you and Hidden, it reminds me of when you would be in OS chat and you'd just constantly be NPing you playing Dragons on Hidden. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just break him? Yes! Those fucking days, man. Those, I mean... <laughs> And I, this is before I had any clue what the hell was going on. And uh, I remember c coming across a map called Dragons, and this is way above my skill level. But I. <laughs> <laughs> he is dying! <laughs> Explosions. So there you are, you're back. Welcome back. Am I oh, back? Right. Yes. Yeah, every time you start going into it, it goes, yep! It, it, oh it's no! Just, it's just. It's well, so great. It's just. No, the it's super good. Dragon's it, it gets... Curse. It's the Dragon's yeah. Curse. <laughs> well, we can keep that. But anyway, what I was saying about that is, uh, back in the day, uh, when that this map was way above my skill level, this was something that I uh, that I I just enjoyed, and something clicked with it with me, and I'd consistently play it, and I couldn't get anywhere with it. But the more I played it, the better I got. So I think, you know, that sort of uh, goes over to the fact that if people want to get better, play maps that are above your skill level. Why not? Have fun with it. If you have fun, don't let people tell you not to play it. I could A rank dragons now. It's impossible full combo. It's impossible full Rest combo because Charles is a jerk. It's the doubles. It's the doubles. And it's those amazing sliders. Mm. And everything else that rips off the of V2B. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway. I remember, in fact, there was, uh, there was we had a little conversation and there was one map that you had made previously and then you made char uh, you made caravan palace and you told me a story behind that map and that oh, it God. was almost the one that was meant to be a joke yeah exactly oh uh, no that was uh mac wilson Chiel. yeah that was a joke and people liked it anyway yeah, it let's, let's stop special. talking about yeah. me this is your interview all, all right. right and for so... our uh final question here that's um uh, on to the uh questions that we have before we unleash you to the community. Um, release the hounds. Yeah. 
Are you a high rank or good at any other games? Um, games, uh, like I said before, I spend a lot of time on Osu, and that's kind of helped me connect with other people in other games. So when I do play other games, I uh, sort of, I guess I can say that I've got some friends already to help me get better. But I wouldn't say I'm high ranked on any of the games. I played uh, World of Warcraft for a while and, you know, I was reasonably high rated in the PvP uh, side of things. But uh, aside from that, no, I'm, I'm actually not high ranked on any of the games. I'm fully up. I feel I like, yeah, if you if you were at the point where you're waiting 30 minutes to get into a queue for something, you're probably high up there. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> While Raikou's mic is flipping out, I think we should uh, open it up for user questions. Yes. Um, so if I'm uh, okay, well, <laughs> as to keep tradition, it looks like Kiyako will be our first person to ask a question. Oh, really? Again? Yes. <laughs> Always Kiyako, no matter Brilliant. what the episode is. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, bring Kiyako in for a question. Hey, Kiyako. Hey, hey Kiyanko. Yellow Mayo. Hello, Mayo XD. How you doing? Hello. X D D D D D D D. Oh goodness. So Raikou, which which year of map? Which maps? Okay, so this is I I can't think of how to word this to where it sounds right. But which year of mapping was the best? Do you think are the best maps? Like map like which maps from which year? Okay, that's that. I, I can't think of how to word it. It just sounds weird every time. I think. What year is the year of the best? Mapping? What what the year of the year of the mapping? Um, oh my god, that's a brilliant question. Um, personally, since I started this game in 2010, I didn't really have a very good idea of what the maps were like before that. However, um, I think. The majority of the maps that came out in, first of all, 2011 and 2013 were the best because I personally think that 2014 has too much of a, a waiting on getting too technical and too it takes away cancer. from the heart of the map. It takes away from the heart of the map. And I know people are thinking, you know, that there's certain mappers that do this, but when you look past all that, the rubbish, the the whole sort of technically styled maps. If you if you actually look at how they're mapped and the way that these genius mappers place them, if you can actually play them yourself, then you'll realise that wow, 2014's brought some great maps. But there's a lot of people sort of copying each other's styles, and there isn't enough uniqueness this year. And I think uh, that's something we need to bring into 2015. That's just a personal opinion. I think I there's some great maps out there. I agree with you on that. Like a lot of maps that I've seen late 2013 into 2014, a lot of them seem like mimics of each other. Yeah. Especially oh. when you see 10 maps of the exact same, like exact same song. Yeah. yeah. I you mean, can't... I think I think some of these, uh, some of the notable mappers this year. I think uh, there's a, there's a couple of notable maps I can point out, and obviously that's uh, Hansa's Miss You map, which is so unique, and there's been so much drama around it that I think that's one of the best uh, that's come out. And um, there's there's a mapper called uh, Pretty, and uh, whoever <coughs> that is has come out with some very very unique ones too, and I'm not sure how well they've been received, but I personally think they're great. And then the last last mapper I think that's doing it so well is KTG Star. And I know people are going to hate me for mentioning all these people, but personally I think because they're being so unique, that's what I like to see. I don't like to see the samey stuff, I like to see uniqueness. I already got, I already got my blue torch out. <laughs> 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 Alright, thank you very much for the question, Kanko. Hey. Hey! Alright. Starting some real controversy now. Oh, yeah, I'm, right. I'm already upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do have a question here that was on my... Dude, I think drum... Dr oh, are you going to ask the uh, old question? Yeah, okay, Zitra well, has a question from somebody who isn't here. Yes, we do have a question that was from somebody that's not here at this moment, but they would like to have been here, but they couldn't. Um, so, Deadbeat's question is, have you attended any player meetups? Okay, um, aside from the uh, people in who I've met up with a couple of them and uh, right next to Nabai. Uh, I actually made an arrangement to go to Poland for the, um, the whatchamacallit, the uh, Animatsuri convention, which had a special OSU room, which had all the top Polish players. And, um, you know, I agreed to meet up with all of them. They're such fantastic people over the game that I was intrigued to fly out there. You too. Time for a new mic. 
<laughs> Go. Welcome back. Oh, <laughs> god damn it! Okay, you need to leave this in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> this will be the bonus features. Just everything explodes. The, the show. Oh man. <laughs> oh my it god. Is... This it is, is so good. Def it's definitely not seeming like it wants to get you too far into community Q and A here. How about now? Yes. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna not move. Perfectly still. All right. <laughs> right here we are. Okay, well, so back to that question. I was uh, supposed to fly out to Poland, and uh, unfortunately my passport didn't come in time, so uh, I wasn't able to go over, which sucked. But we're trying to organise it for next year, and that'd be an awesome cool. meetup. And how could I forget the most important thing? I'm uh, going to be flying out to America soon to visit Jack Chan and uh, and Deacon as well, and hopefully you guys. Yay! I'm excited about that one. Charles doesn't Costa. like to meet new people. I Charles is people. terrified. The fuzz <laughs> race takes us all. Oh my god! Dude, like seriously? I think he's dead. They could change this and put this sound effects in Five Nights at Freddy's, and I'd probably crap my pants. You pee yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would pee myself. But yeah, like every every time, every, the reason that I'm scared of meeting people is he trusts that he would bitch slap me as soon as he sees me. Oh. Or what? What you call it? Love tap? Yeah, it's gonna Fuck be a love that. tap. It's okay, dude. No, it's okay. That's it's not love good. tap. It's gonna right. be great. Waiting for Raikou again. <sighs> it is looking like he might be down for the rest of this. I don't um, know. I think. I think. Uh, we only have one more question. Is it completely gone? There, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Let's, get let's hurry on to the next <laughs> question, real quick. Over. Drum, drum has a question. Uh, he doesn't have a mic though, so type yes, out your he thing, does. drum, drum. Does he? Does he? Yes, he does. I thought he has I'm a cold. I'm watching you, drum, drum. Get in here. Okay. Turn on your mic. Hello. Hold on. He's got to turn on his mic. I don't care if you have a cold. Do it. Uh... <laughs> okay. So, I've asked this to a lot of people. So, what was it like when you first started playing Os? Like, what did you feel on the inside? <laughs> what did I feel on the inside? Well, uh, there's a famous Simpsons episode. Um, and I think this is a big quote. It's the one where uh, Homer's uh, got a sort of a, a little plaque on the wall that says, Just remember, you're here forever. Um, <laughs> The oh, second no. I started playing OC, I knew I was going to be here forever, and um, it wasn't soul-sucking like his adventure in The Simpsons, it was actually a great feeling, and uh, I still get that to date. There's nothing like f a song that you've tried for for ages, or getting a map ranked, it just fills you with fun and adrenaline. Yeah, it's always that feeling, it's like, oh, let's do this, it's hard, but it's fun. Ah, it's great, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I always felt happy when I played it, it wasn't the funny part. Yeah. Funny. Well, thanks for that, that was a great question. Thank you. There you go, see, no call to keep Drum Drum down. <laughs> I still feel well, terrible, though. After a bit of persuasion. <laughs> Give this man some tequila. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't tequila make the cold worse? Oh, uh, man, I don't know. As a uh, bartender, oh, yeah, we it's didn't, a completely different we didn't thing. Tap, it, we actually didn't talk about uh, your um, hobbies outside of the game. Screw it, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, I moved him too early. Sorry, uh, Jumjum. <laughs> it, it's alright. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, feel free, go ahead, Charles. You could ask him uh, some yeah, right, questions. Yeah, So, you're talking about tequila. Are you a particular aficionado of beverages? Um, well, um, my job is a uh, bartender. I uh, dispense drinks and mix drinks for a living. And uh, this is something I'm doing at a young age, which I think is a great way to make money. It's super fun. You meet some great people. You know, it's a great, great life. Um, so, I mean, as a bartender, I have an automatic inclination uh, to wait towards drinks over water. So, uh, any day of the week, if I've got something lying next to me, I'll be drinking it. And I think, uh, I think it's great. I love alcohol. Um, I love <laughs> mixing it. I love creating new things with it. I don't necessarily drink it so much, but I love making things with it, and that's why I'm doing that. And uh, aside from the bartending, I'm actually a skateboarder as well, which is something I've done for nearly 13 years now. I just imagine you skateboarding down the road with like tequila in hand. Oh yeah, well, with a with a base with a baseball fact, cap turned just, backwards. Just uh, just last uh, weekend, Saturday night, I was actually skateboarding down the hill with a bottle of beer in my hand. That was oh good my fun. Goodness. That was <laughs> lots so of cool. fun. That's great. Yeah, I bet. And, I bet um, uh, when you when you do see Deacon, I bet he's gonna get a kick out of that. 
That was going to be so much fun. And yeah. uh, aside from that, uh, just like Jack Chan, I'm also a uh, a rock climber. I'm a boulder, oh, which is uh, I didn't know that. so much fun. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm going out to meet him, so we can just climb all day. It's going to be great fun. Just don't bring a tequila when you're climbing. <laughs> ah. that's, that's not safe. <laughs> it might make the experience a whole lot more savourable. <laughs> Apparently he's going to laugh at my accent and laugh at all the sort of English sort of uh, little things that I say, which is going to be quite funny. Oh boy. Alright, so I guess uh, at this point we're going to see if there's any more user questions. Yeah, so are there any more user questions that you guys would like to ask before Raikou explodes? Um, it looks like a... Uh... Uh, Kianko has another one. Oh no, Danny wants a clarification. Danny thought your DPI was ah, 800. Yes, yes. Okay, so about uh, a year ago, I decided that I could switch at will between 800 and 1000 DPI and everything in between. And this is a very good question, Danny, actually. Um, when I play jumps with a bigger range or like I play maps that have sort of used the whole map, the whole screen, I actually use 1000 DPI. Uh, if I'm playing hidden hard rock and I've got to deal with smaller circles, I prefer to have more control. And that's why I use uh, 800 to 900 DPI for those particular maps. So I can interchange and I think it's great. And I think I urge anyone who uh, plays mouse to sort of fiddle around with their DPI and see what fits them best. Four different maps. <laughs> Alright. So uh, over time you realized 1000 was better for you than 800 in summary? Um, in summary, 1000 is my sort of, uh, like my standard setting, but if I'm playing Hidden Hard Rock, yeah, it'll go down. Oh, you change your DPI depending on the settings? Yes, no, depending oh, on the uh, style of map. Depending on the style of map. That would, I, I can't even imagine doing that. That would throw me yeah. off completely. Well, if I need more control for small circles, then I'll go down to 900 or 800. Wow, okay, so it sounds like you're not even playing with reflexes at this point. Um... It's more, I think the most important thing is being able to read a map and uh, sort of, I guess if you need a little bit more control, you should learn to adapt to playing with a lower set sensitivity just for your benefit. I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't good. All right. Boom. So I think we may have another Kianko question. Let's see it. I'll get up. Uh, actually, I have no verification on whether we do or not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Sure yeah, okay, yeah, the answer is to. yes, let's go. Hi, right, Kyanko. Hey, Greg, who do you cosplay? Oh, mate. Duh, fucking um, <laughs> We'll edit out the swearing. Um, basically... No, no um, the swearing, okay, the this, swearing stays. Yeah, it's this, staying this in. Alright, this is a good fucking question, then. Um, this is actually brilliant, because uh, this game... Okay, no is the first one. That's, that's it, but I'm gonna say... This game has opened me up to a whole world of uh, the whole sort of um, like oh, no. the Asian culture, right? So before this, I was just like your your average bartender, you know, I'd, I'd go out and that sort of thing and have a have a great time. But this game has introduced me to anime, the whole the whole sort of Japanese culture thing, which I think is incredible and very intriguing. And uh, a lot of my friends uh, immerse themselves in this too. So I've very slowly but surely been sort of weaned onto it. I don't watch anime all the time, but I think it's some of the best thing you can watch. It's, it opens up your mind. Uh, yeah, the whole culture has intrigued me extremely. And I'm, I guess, Kyonko, this doesn't really relate to your question, but I don't cosplay, but if I could go as, uh, I guess, um, a Z-Trot, man, I'd win every competition. What? <laughs> I wonder what that would look like. That'd be epic. Oh, if you, you, you... At, but if you went after the fan character, it would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Oh, man. Uh, are you a fan of Fanzin's dress-up cosplay? Show me this. Are you serious? <laughs> There's a lot of pictures yeah. of Fanzin's legs. People, yeah, people oh, are really my... into Fanzin's legs right now. Why, fan why his legs? Because he has very feminine looking legs. Oh, does he? That's adorable. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I think, I I think, think that's a good place to. Yeah, Give, me a, gonna... yeah. oh, Give me a beer. Give me a drink. All right. right. Shot of vodka. No, right. I mean, all credit to the guy. Play us off, each other. Okay, thank you for the question, Kiyako. We're going to move you back up to the waiting room. Cheers.
And All um, right. as always, this was a pretty decent interview. Thank you for the time. We do apologize for the technical difficulties, although most of them will be cut it out and post it. I think, it. I think but yeah. we'll keep say, a couple of the really good ones. We got a few last words for Raikou. I think, yeah, I think we should say that uh, everyone probably thinks that uh, this interview had a lot of uh, premonition to it. We got this done. We actually conceived the idea of me having an interview one hour ago. So I think we've done I just pretty well up. for it. Yeah. <laughs> I Charles just woke well. up. Yeah. So, everybody, um, this is the Oast Talk uh, crew signing out. Um, Z Trout here. And Charles so much for having five. me. Rest in peace, Danny's last question. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, and uh, Raikou. Uh, well, I, I, you know what? You yeah. know what? Let's do the very, very last question. Do okay. Just go for it. Go for Raikou. it. Raikou. Does hearing TV size music for years annoy you eventually? <laughs> oh my god. Um, despite the fact that it's been the source of the majority of my ranks, I can't hate them, but flipping hell, man. Uh, it does <laughs> get ridiculous after a while. Bring on Hansa. Can you enjoy the one impact. minute 30 seconds of this song? <laughs> Can you do it okay? Um, since everything I play is on double time, they're usually like 40 seconds. Um, oh. You know what I mean. Oh. So it's just over and over. Retry, retry, retry. So it's... And that's it. Exactly. And restart. Yeah. Anyways, though. Okay, so scratch that first ending. That was bullshit. This is the this real is one. The real this, one. Is, this has been so much fun. Thanks so much for having me. So you, this is great. This done There's so a lot quickly. of uh, gameplay insight in this interview now, which is awesome. Yes. And yeah. remember, everybody, and remember, rhythm is only a click with a mouse, not a tablet. Mouse. <laughs> Fired shot. <laughs> away. And we'll see you guys real soon. See you next time. Mouse, mouse, race. <laughs>